Get to know Dr. Denise Wymos, the incredible author of Blind Faith, My Life-Changing Journey in China. I'm excited to welcome Dr. Denise Wymos to the Shandria Show. Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Good to be here. You are an award-winning author, media correspondent, and educator. Let's talk about the premise and inspiration of your new book titled Blind Faith, My Life-Changing Journey in China. Ooh, blind faith. Um, well, what happened? I'm a professor, professional uh, teacher for over 14 years, college professor. Thoroughly loved it, taught business and marketing, everything in the business area. And just got to a point where I'm like, you know what? I kind of want to do more. Kind of not lost my mojo, but just kind of need to be more, I need to be inspired. And a good friend of mine said, you might want to consider going to China. Hmm. And I said, China, 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 you know. And she had a great program uh, through President Obama at the time because this was 2014, 2015. So, um, and she, I know, she, I knew she had uh, flown teachers to China and abroad, to Thailand, Dubai, and they loved the experience. So I said, well, let me just see. So, long story short, I did the Skype meeting with um, with her colleague, and, and he said, when can you come to China? And in about 71 days, I was there. So wow. it, was, it, was, it was a quick decision, huh? It was quick because, you know, one, I'm single, I'm not married, I have no children, so it's just me. And um, so I sold my condo, um, I gave up things away, and just said, you know what, this could be the best thing I've ever done, or the craziest thing I've ever done, and it, it turned out to be both, and it was wonderful. So I just said, you know what, life is too short, let's go for it. Uh, it was a drastic change I needed, complete different environment, and it was wonderful. Walk me through your experience from life as an educator to moving cross continent. What were you in life prior to at that seventy that, that day one before you made the move to move to China seventy one days later? What was life? I, life was great. I mean, I was not in fear of losing anything. Um, I just got to a point where I was kind of bored. Uh, I had taught for fourteen years uh, as a college professor. I was a professional writer. I'd written three books by that by that point. I was traveling, doing a lot of correspondence with celebrities covering New York Fashion Week and the Kentucky Derby and all these great things. So things were great. Wasn't anything bad happening. I just, I just, I just was like, I'm regressing and not progressing. Okay. So life was great. Um, life was good. Uh, my sister had my niece, my Madison, who was ten, who was five at the time. My parents were great. So it just, it wasn't anything bad happening. So uh, I just got to a point where I just needed something more. So nothing was crazy going on in my life. <laughs> so life was, I, good. life was great. You just took advantage of an incredible experience. It sounds absolutely. Like. Mm -hmm. absolutely. With both feet. Both feet. So what did it take for you to mentally make such a bold leap? And why Asia? I said to myself, I, I wanted something different. And I didn't know what that, what that was. And then when Nuchelle presented traveling abroad and being a foreign professor. Uh, she said, that's just a great asset to have as an American, to travel abroad, to live. She said, Denise, you don't, you're not married, you don't have any kids, so why not do this? So I said, you didn't get a good point. So I prayed about it, I spoke with my dad. My dad said, go, 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 why not go? And uh, I had talked with teachers who had gone on her program before. They had loved it. They had extended their time. So I said, okay, well, maybe this might be just what I'm looking for. So it wasn't that, it wasn't that difficult to sell my condo. It was not that difficult to uh, get rid of just things. I realized then that they're just things. Clothes, blankets, furniture. It's, they're just things. I can get so it wasn't a huge, uh, it wasn't a lot of mental preparation for you. Like, I'm, I'm committed to doing this. It's not far-fetched. I have my family support. Sounds like yeah. a good opportunity and I'm gonna take it. Exactly. What, what got me though was when I got to the Chinese consulate in Duluth, Georgia, and they said, your flight will be. And that's when I said, oh, 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 wait a minute. We're, okay, we're doing this. We're, we're doing real at that moment. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Because you know, you go through the motion, okay, get the visa, get, I already had a passport, okay, what's the flight, okay, fine, okay, fine, 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 fine. But then when she said, here is your visa to China, because you, know, you can't just go to China. 
it's like Nepal. You can't just go to Nepal to do that. You have to have permission from the continent and then the country. So uh, that was a that was uh, a bit overwhelming for me as well because I had to interview with the consulate of China in Georgia to be approved to go for this year abroad. You know, so that was cool. I knew my education was sound, my background was sound, but they had to still approve me. And at this point, I was I had my condo up for sale, so I'm like, wait a minute, this this is past <laughs> work. We we halfway here. And it just worked out wonderful. It was just great. And again, you know, just the, the power of positive thinking, this is going to be great. This is going to be awesome. And it was. Well, it sounds like you had no self-doubt. Um, it sounds like you had no negative feedback, you know. So it sounds like it was a pretty easy way for you to handle it all. It was. You know, I, I, I got to tell you, I met foreign teachers, well, teachers from, from uh, the USA and abroad, who had some horror stories. No one believed in them. And I just, that was not my situation. My dad was very supportive. Uh, my brother, my twin sister, they were like, let's go. You know, again, I'm not married. I have no children. But then I met people there who had moved their families over there. So their kids were learning Thai, Thailand. They were learning uh, Hindu, Indian from, from, uh, from other countries. And they were learning Japanese from Japan. So what a wealth of information for those kids to have when they grow up. They'll have all these three languages and they come back to America. So um, there were both sides of the coin, but yeah, it was. I only had good vibes to folks saying, "Man, go do it. Life is short. You may as well." It did happen, and it was great. Absolutely, very inspiring. <laughs> um, what word of encouragement do you have for anyone who's watching who may feel stuck in life or their career? You know, what's the first step to self-discovery in your opinion? My first step is to recognize that something has to change in your life. You know when you're in a rut. You know when you've lost your mojo. You know when you're just going through the motions. And I get it. You got bills. You got light bills. You got water. You got kids. You got daycare. I, I get it. I get it. So, but the first step is to say, you know what? There's, I need something more in my life to be more fulfilled. So the first step is to realize that. Secondly, if your plan is to do something drastic or different, talk to people who have done what you're trying to do. That's what I did. I met teachers who were living in China and, and had come back and loved it. I met people who had gone to Thailand, had gone to Dubai, had gone to Taiwan, Shanghai, Beijing, and they had nothing but great experiences for the program I went on with my good friend Michelle Hastings. So I said, okay, 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 great, I'm, I'm, I'm in. So when, when I when I when I saw those positive stories, I said, okay, well now it's time for me to go and make it happen. So one, recognize it. Two, do the pros and cons of the your work. And then three, you have to have just you just know you you just have to know you can do it. And that's what helped me. This thing right here, that helped me. Believe believing in yourself. I mean, and you also have a career in you know taking leaps. I mean, you're an educator. You're an educator, sure. and so you know this is another great leap. You know, your life is full of leaps. <laughs> it, is. it is, and and that's the beauty of what life is about. You know, but but I get it too because I understand the bubble. I understand comfort zone. I get it because in your comfort zone, uh, I go to church here, I go to the, the school here, uh, I, I shop here, I buy this there, get my gas. I, I understand the bubble. I get the bubble. But it's very, to me, a bit dangerous to stay in the bubble because you don't know what's outside of that. If I had not gone to China, I would not have been able to see the, the Great Wall of China, which is a wonder of the world, or to the, the floating market in, in Thailand, or to see the, the, the various jungles in Vietnam, or, or, or go to Dubai, you know? So I was there, so I said, I'm not gonna just come here and teach and, and experience. I'm gonna see what, what the Far East is about. So now I can come back with more conversation for people when they want to consider me for uh, a client or for me to hire someone to do something. It's a, it's a better conversation because you travel so, so, much, so much more. And then it's great cultural awareness too. Absolutely. Um, you, also, you also host a podcast called Self Discovery with Dr. D on Sundays. What's the format of yeah. the podcast? <laughs> The format is exactly that, self-discovery. It's all about, we all have that voice that says to us, you should be doing this. You should try that. And either we listen to it or we don't. And so my, it's all about, number one, I'm your trigger. Whatever dream or goal you want to go for, I am in your corner, because that was me. I've been there. I've been there where it's like, you know what? I go to work, I grade papers, I teach, take a shower, cook, go home. home. Same thing every day. I get it. And for me, it came to a point where I'm like, I just couldn't do that anymore. I just, I, I couldn't get over the routine. So um, so that's what, what I did. So it's all about 
that voice that's talking to you, listen to that voice. Um, make a plan, do a six month plan. If I were to try this, what could happen? Right. Weigh the options, the good, the bad, and then just go. If you don't go, you will never know. So it's all about discovering yourself. And you can discover yourself at any time. I'll be 48 on Wednesday, and I cannot wait. Happy 47. <laughs> 47 was great. I cannot wait to see what 48 will do. I hope 48 blows my mind because every day, you know, this with, with this pandemic, we're, we're, we're being reminded that every day is a gift. So if we don't go for it or at least try, then we'll just, we'll just never know. We'll just never know. The principles that you talk about in your podcast, do they directly tie into your book, Blind Faith? Do you use principles Absolutely. in the book or topics from the Absolutely. book? Absolutely. I, I, talk in, I say in my workbook, uh, in my book called Blind Faith, about having a vision board and knowing that there are certain things on your vision board that might be uh, unattainable, but put them on there anyway, because that's what life is about. There are people who come from nothing and make the top of their area. So if they can do it, why can't they? So it completely ties in. Dropping everything and going to China is blind faith, because I didn't know anyone there. I had no friends there. I had no family there. I knew my interpreter and the president of the school. That's it. China is just shot of two billion people. You know, so uh, it's all about that. It's all about immersing yourself in something completely foreign to you and thriving anyway. Well, that's definitely an inspiration to myself and anyone out there who is, you know, looking to take giant leaps in their own lives. I want to thank hey. you for your time today. Um, if anyone is interested in your book, Blind Faith, or following your journey online, what's the best way to contact you? The best way is to go to my website, which is www.drdenisemose.com. Uh, you can always Google me. Uh, that's a great way too. But the best way is my website. My email is there. The book is there. My work is there. My story is there. And uh, some pictures from China and all my other travels. What about your social media? Social media is, sorry, thank you. Social media. <laughs> Instagram is, uh, Instagram is uh, Denise Mose. Twitter is Denise Mose. Facebook is Denise Mose. It's all the same. So Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all the same. Yes. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for and taking it. Okay. And LinkedIn. Can't forget LinkedIn. Yeah, <laughs> but thank LinkedIn. you so much for taking the time to be on the Shandria show today. I really appreciate it. Get to know Zara Haydari, a dynamic psychotherapist dedicated to helping others become the best versions of themselves. She and I discuss couples counseling during the pandemic. I'm excited to feature Zara Haydari on the show today. She is a licensed marriage and family counselor. And you're also a psychotherapist, right? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Tell yes. me about yourself and where you're from and, and how did you get into the industry of helping others? I am originally from Iran and uh, was born and raised in Iran, came to this country when I was 19 and started to get obsessed with Oprah and self-growth and I was in a bad marriage so in order to learn coping skills I learned I started reading and getting educated and watching Oprah every day and um, to heal my marriage and my own personal pain that's why I became a therapist wow thank you Oprah <laughs> thank you Oprah thank you Oprah that is amazing, amazing story. Um, explain your affinity specifically for crisis management for couples. Is it because of your turmoil in your past marriage? I think it's a combination of everything. Sometimes, uh, not sometimes, I believe always uh, life pushes us to get a stronger and grow and takes us to dark alleys because God has big plans for us. So my story, yes. Uh, married at 19, arranged marriage and uh, lots of unhappy days and uh, I was on a daily crisis in the marriage and in my country, Iran, during the revolution and the war, uh, bombing and all of that stuff, uh, crisis. So, uh, and losing my dad all of a sudden in a car accident at the age of uh, 11. So crisis, crisis. And I became interested to helping others. And I was a hairdresser first. I was helping people um, 
to feel pretty and look pretty, then I realized God is calling me to do something deeper. And Oprah, again, guided me. I'm very serious. I started buying and reading all the books she recommended. And uh, although I was in a very abusive situation, I decided I don't want to have an affair and I don't want to be addicted. I need a way to get out of this so I could be um, a messenger of hope for others with my journey. That's why I got the AA, BA and masters and um, and that's how I became a therapist. And I work for the government. I work for the County of Orange. And what we do, we provide crisis, we provide mental health. So that kind of got me more into going to people's homes and if they're suicidal, if they're having fights, what can I do? And then because I was getting good at that with the blessing of God, my pastor, Pastor Tim Story, who is an amazing friend and a mentor and works with uh, celebrity coaches and all of that, he told some of his clients if they need a therapist, this is the one. So I got to go to my high influencers circles clients to solve problems because i don't take six years to solve problems i have couples they come to me six sessions five sessions we know what's gonna happen so it's fast it's effective and it's very goal oriented and we pray i pray i'm i'm into jesus and lord we pray and uh, we do meditation, deep breathing, and then we do clinical work and it's very intense work. It's not like I see you in three weeks. No, it's like six weeks kind of a boot camp. We just do it and it's done. What's the name of your practice? Um, I, I call it healing with love uh, because I believe we all could heal with the love of Lord that could heal us with everything. Am I looking in the right direction? Oh, I don't know. You're fine. <laughs> right, look at you here. I'm lost for a second. It's really, when you, when you, you really can't tell when okay. you're looking. So I want to look at you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I think that you're the perfect person to, you know, offer some advice for some scenarios. I know it's, we're in the midst of COVID and quarantine and a lot is going on in the world. A lot of devastation in terms of, you know, financially, mentally, personally, et cetera. And so it can wreak havoc on a lot of households all over the world. And so I invited you here today to see if you could help some couples out there that may be, may be watching. You could help them in these different scenarios. Are you up to that? I am definitely up to that. <laughs> and um, first of all, I want to say what an honor to be invited in your show. And you are our Oprah. You're gonna be like Oprah, big, like like Oprah big. I'm sorry, I'm just keep She's saying that. Be to me. <laughs> and you honestly have that charisma and have that uh, compassion and and have that beautiful mind that you just want to help. I love that. So, coming to couples and COVID nineteen, um, we have to acknowledge it is happening. Okay. So number one, I tell all the couples that are watching, let's acknowledge the fact it is a fact there is a crisis but what are we gonna do about it so this is the season to either thrive together or survive together couples that are actually thriving together i could t give you reports of beautiful blessings someone just finished her cooking book while he just finished his six weeks coaching program i mean people are really becoming creative and leaning towards each other so i want to say number one is if you are committed remind yourself why are you committed why are you even staying together okay there is a season in the marriage in a relationship if it's raining outside, we cannot go with our shorts. We should be, you know, wearing a jacket. So this is a season of crisis with COVID-19. So let's shift the attention from negativity of what is happening out there and come to positivity and a growth mindset. What can we do as a couple to move forward? So remind each other you are in each other's team. Nobody's fighting. You are in the same team, so let's put the finances on the table because that's a huge issue right now. 
couples are getting to know each other's secrets about finances, credit card bills, or unhealthy addiction to gambling, or unfortunately porn or other stuff. So let's be vulnerable. Let's be honest. Let's. This is the best time to get to know your spouse in the deepest, deepest level. Love that so much. I have these scenarios. I'm going to read these. Go ahead, please. So for any couples out there that are watching that may be in a personal crisis of their own, um, I, I would love for you to offer professional advice for each of these scenarios. And the first one is speak to the couple battling financial disparity due to job loss or slow business. How would you help them? How can you help them? Okay, number one, do not blame each other, okay? Number two, let's be honest. Let's put the bills on the table and let's acknowledge someone in the team because we are in the same team, lost the job and lost the income. So be a supportive, loving partner, husband, wife, and know and have more compassion, okay? Compassion, grace, and feel the pain they are feeling instead of judging them and become their number one cheerleader because when people lose their job they lose their confidence and then they lose their competence so try to create that positive energy in them to encourage them to get out of this by maybe helping them if they don't know how to do a resume but you know maybe you help your spouse to make a resume and update the resume in linkedin work together as a team and go towards the problem with a solution focused ideas instead of what are we gonna do and being negative and just wasting time let's create togetherness and growth and creativity together I don't know if it makes sense. No, that makes perfect sense. Perfect, perfect. Okay, the next couple. Speak to the couple experiencing a health crisis and a mate stepping up as caretaker. Okay, that is very difficult. Number one, pray. Pray for your partner, your wife, your husband that is going through a health crisis because that is not easy. Number two, um, try to create some space for yourself to be in tune with Lord with your own basic needs so you could give because if you are in an airplane and the airplane is going down you need to put the mask on you first so in order to be a good caregiver to a spouse that is going through a health crisis you need to remind you you need to take care of you first and that doesn't mean you're selfish or ignorant or arrogant that means you are a powerful person who admits i need to take care of me by meditating by praying by eating healthier by maybe calling my best friends my support system my mentors so i could build myself up for the love of my life to heal and remember marriage goes through different seasons and this is the season that you said you're gonna marry for better or worse unfortunately this is the worst so step up your game come back to the basic values why did you even get married to this person and remind yourself that in god's timing he or she will be healed and will come out of this stronger and be extra kind and loving and compassionate to the partner that is not doing good amazing the next one speak to the couple on the brink of divorce still living under the same roof okay um that is happening a lot too unfortunately what i really want to recommend doesn't matter is COVID 19 or not if there's domestic violence i need everybody to really really get out of that situation get the professional help so do not stay in an abusive relationship it doesn't matter what is going on and personally experiencing domestic violence and actually getting a restraining order so i know how government could help or friends or family could help if you are in that situation by speaking out your truth so but let's say there is no domestic violence they are just not doing good they are falling apart um i recommend 
personally, if there is no addiction, if there is no um, abuse, and if there is no adultery is going on at this moment, I recommend my couples to stay together. And why but is that? Because it's too much uncertainty going on outside mm -hmm. with the coronavirus and the changes that I think personally, again, gone through a divorce, unfortunately, divorce is a very stressful situation. You have to be ready to get into that. And some of my couples go to it because they just fell out of love and whatever reasons, I respect that. Then they call me and they say, you said it's hard, it is hard because it's a grief because right now we are processing the grief of our freedom with the coronavirus outside. So, so many, I mean, look at you, you look gorgeous and you are not in, in front of your huge TV production now. I miss my clients hugging them, praying with them. You know, I'm very like touchy and huggy. So we all process <laughs> of the grief and then divorce, it doesn't matter what is the reason. It is a break. Of, of something that was meaningful to you someday, somehow in the past. So that creates grief. And grief is very heavy and painful. So to summarize this question, because of the COVID-19 and the grief that is outside, let's minimize the grief inside and try to live together as respectful roommates co-parent as respectful parents that God blessed us with these beautiful angels and let's work on ourselves see a therapist coach whatever mm -hmm. so we could learn to navigate through this divorce with peace and grace after hopefully COVID-19 but it's a one day at a time if tomorrow you wake up and you say what Zara says it did not make sense uh, it's your decision. It's a, it's a personal decision, but I think from your professional expertise, that was that's what you say. Stay together, stick it out, and and go to the root of why you got married in the first place. And one more thing, please, I want to add, please. Everybody's stress level is really high right now, mm -hmm. so people are getting divorced sometimes for wrong reasons, and divorce is permanent. Uh, COVID-19 is not. Right. So let's just weigh our options. Weigh our options. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Next one.